Hello, Gareth here. And uh, it's early in the morning, but it's a beautiful day. And I'm going to talk about this painting. So um, sometimes my flow might sound a little bit stiff because I'm I'm just reading what I wrote because it's easier. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to show you a video of me painting this picture again so I hope you enjoy that I am quite happy with it but I don't think it's as good as the original but there you go I can live with that so anyway um, this is all about or this painting has a has quite a story because it's about some hiking I did in Japan with a, an old Japanese man. So several years ago, an old Japanese man befriended me. And one day he offered to take me mountain hiking. So first he took me to the top of Mount Ryozen. I think it's called Ryozen and it was my first time to climb that mountain and I really enjoyed it. Another time he took me to this nature park. I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but we had a long walk around that area and part of the walk was by a stream and I just remember that it was very beautiful and the old man told me that he used to bring his children there when they were young and um, it had been a popular place then so that must have been 30 years before uh, but when we went there was almost nobody there and you could see that the place had declined a bit like some of the wooden posts or fencing had broken and it hadn't been repaired and things like that and I find those places very interesting at some point in the future I'll tell you about this um, 60s theme park that I went to in Japan and it was an absolutely amazing place um, it had all those big arcade games and at the hotel they'd like push them all outside and they were all outside in a in a group together looking very lonely and uh, they just put a waterproof sheet over them and it was just interesting because I remember those places from when I was a kid and and that place we went to was now quite empty only a few people went there but it there was something very nostalgic and interesting about it but I won't ramble on to that because there was so much about that to tell you and to be honest I hope they don't close these places because sometimes even in their decay it's like they they become interesting just very very interesting places um, anyway that's something to talk about in the future these old theme parks in Japan so anyway I really really like them so um, back to this story so the next time he took me out he took me to Kuju mountain and this was amazing so I've climbed this mountain before with my family but this time he took me on a different route and it was really really good because we went up the ridge of a mountain that was next to the main route and maybe this is like I don't know if it's like still Kuju Mountain or what but there were big jagged rocks rising up out of the ridge of the mountain it was so beautiful and perhaps the photo I took and which I've done a painting of here isn't isn't the best shot so I really need to go there again and get some better photos perhaps it was spectacular it really really was and um, it just uh, yeah inspired me to paint these uh, pictures so interestingly I don't know when I painted the original two pictures for this um, but 
I know I climbed this mountain in 2012, so quite a long time ago, and I think it was painted around that period. But I'm, I'm surprised that I even tried to paint this scene because it must have been a really intimidating subject for me because painting these mountain scenes, although they're beautiful, it's quite difficult for me actually and I don't normally do that so um, so I'm sure the image came from my digital uh, cameras memory card and all the images on that card have disappeared there was um, something wrong with it which is a bit sad but true but anyway um, even though I now like this painting at first to be honest I thought it was no good but luckily I didn't throw it away and uh, a few years later by chance I came across it I was looking through like an overwhelming pile of paintings that I had uh, at least I think that's what I was doing I was possibly culling my creations you know throwing them away the rubbish ones but in the process I came across this now forgotten painting and discovered that I, I actually quite liked it and saved it. So I'm also happy because um, I'm kind of repeating myself here but I find country scenes very difficult to paint. Um, city scenes are much easier to paint and so I'm really happy that this was a countryside scene or painting and it was successful but anyway getting back to the story after climbing the mountain we came back down to the car park and my Japanese friend saw her foreigner and said to me don't you want to talk to him so Japanese people always think that foreigners desperately want to talk with other foreigners however most foreigners are rather cold towards one another in Japan I think I've sometimes said hi to a foreigner and received a very cold and formal hello or just been ignored and so I said no on this occasion and he looked very surprised and I got the impression that he thought I wasn't a friendly person and that may be partly true because in, especially in those days I was very introverted and to be honest I didn't really have um, a lot of self-esteem you know even today if you say Gareth have you got self-esteem it's something I feel a bit uncomfortable about but I think we should all like ourselves <laughs> I think it's good that we we like ourselves I really really do but it took me a long time to get round around to that kind of um, that kind of belief or opinion anyway and I think it is an opinion. You either decide you don't like yourself or you do like yourself. And it can feel quite embarrassing to say, I love myself, right? Makes people laugh. Oh yeah, I love myself. It seems egotistical. But to be honest, I think deep, deep down, we all do love ourselves. And society teaches us not to. But I think sometimes we should love ourselves a bit more and maybe be a bit kinder a more understanding towards ourselves but there you go there you go moving on anyway he kept insisting and so I said hi to this foreigner and we had a brief chat and he was actually a very pleasant person this foreigner but I think after that my Japanese friend thought I was a very antisocial type person and perhaps he wasn't so wrong in that judgment but that was the last trip we had together and it makes me wonder if that incident made him stop taking me on trips into the countryside. Well, such is life and this has often happened to me. There, there have been these promising things and then suddenly they've stopped. But you know, it makes you stronger and you just, I've become a bit of a an inner warrior you could say and I just get used to that in life the ups and downs so anyway next to the car park was this gift shop come restaurant come spa and we were aching a lot after climbing up the mountain yeah and wanted to get into a hot tub 
so we paid to go and it was on the second floor and okay this maybe sounds a bit strange to you but this was a very old 60s building and I'm really sensitive to places and when I look at these places I don't know why it makes my head start to swim a bit I don't know if you can understand that and I get this kind of weird feeling it's almost like I can feel the age of this place and I don't know it's almost like an existentialist kind of feeling when I suddenly wake up and I feel very present in a sense and it's almost too much and it's a quite unpleasant experience in some ways to be honest but anyway that's how I felt but moving on um, it feels a bit like you're going to pass out but I didn't anyway I I casually put one foot in the tub and instantly pulled it out with a yelp because it was like boiling water and my foot was bright red too and uh, the old man being like most old Japanese men it, it was a really tough tough guy yeah and so despite my reaction he just waded in yeah but but I could tell by his expression that even for him he realized it was way too hot and pretty quickly he got out again yeah so um, he didn't want to be parboiled yeah it was that hot it really really was so we went downstairs and told a member of staff who apologized and told us that somebody had made a mistake and uh, anyway if we waited for about 30 minutes they could cool it down a bit but that was a bit too long for us so we gave up on the spa anyway after that we got in his car this Japanese guy's car and he took me to this really beautiful grassy area that was full of trees it's beautiful place and then he told me that he owned it so I was really impressed and I also realized how rich and successful he was which I hadn't realized that until that point anyway after that we went home and it would have been really nice to have gone on some more trips with him and he really could have showed me some beautiful areas of Japan but that didn't happen but I'm very grateful and uh, it's interesting because despite his age he was a lot fitter than me and when we went up the mountains I would be the one lagging behind him anyway so that's basically it I've got a few things to add so um, I worked out when we went on these trips from my memory card I had a memory card and it had a blurry photo and it was from one of these places we went I think the Mount Yorzem and it was dated and it was 2012 so we went on these trips in that year and it was roughly all around the same kind of uh, period so I'm guessing that I painted that picture in that year too but it could have been the year after or the year after that but roughly around that period okay and another little um, extra thing uh, this Japanese man he told me a little about his life and that he grew up in Taiwan I think even though he is Japanese and it made me realize that when he was young Japan actually controlled Taiwan and that Japanese people were living there and growing up there and so that was very interesting and you do meet these old Japanese men who have lots of interesting stories when I first came here I met this old Japanese man on the bus and he started telling me about being a pilot in World War two and I'll never forget how he said like with a really cheerful look on his face how an American pilot shot down his plane and how he had to jump out and parachute down to the ground I could be wrong but I think he said he had to climb onto the wing and jump off the wing it, it's something you just couldn't imagine right so anyway 
that's it I hope you enjoyed this and um, I'm sorry if the audio is not so good at the moment I'm using uh, headphones because they give the best sound but I'm hoping at some time to get uh, or at some point to get a good mic and then hopefully it will be more comfortable for me and the sound will be a little bit better but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope it's brought a little bit of joy and inspiration into your day. That's all for this one.